Hello, my name is Sierra Olderman, and the topic that I will be presenting today is ethnic minority groups in mental health. The question of this presentation is, should ethnic minority groups have different psychiatric services provided to them? <clears throat> well, according to Bu and Sasha Haran in the journal, should there be separate psychiatric services for ethnic minority groups? They state, the arguments against special services are often economic. What cost do we place on the mental well-being of ethnic minorities? To date, the mental health of black and ethnic minorities have not been valued highly, with unsuccessful persistence of models of care that allegedly suit the majority. Now, their statement suggests that because of money, a price on a human being's mental health must be paid, and if it is not, then these individuals are not given the right mental health treatment that they deserve, and this may lead to further implications later in their life. <clears throat> Concept to think about during this topic is that a specific minority group or age group is more at risk for developing mental health disorders. Now, I want you, the audience, to take a second and think about whether or not you agree with this concept. Now, according to Carlson and Nauru, in the journal, Relation Between Racial Discrimination and Social Class, This and Health Among Ethnic Minority Groups, they state, Black Americans who said that they would report and challenge racism had lower blood pressure than those who said that they would tolerate racism and not report their experience. Now, personally, this statement sounds like some black Americans will let mental health suffer, let their mental health suffer before reporting any experiences or encounters with racism, which most likely means that these individuals are experiencing some form of racism on a daily or weekly basis. Here are some interesting facts that I found during my research. And the first one is that approximately 18% of US adults have a diagnosable mental disorder in a given year. And approximately 4% of adults have a serious mental illness. Now another fact is that mental disorders are among the top most costly health conditions for adults, 18 to 64 in the US, along with cancer and trauma-related disorders. Now, some other facts are also that the death rate for African Americans is higher than whites for heart disease, stroke, cancer, asthma, influenza, and pneumonia diabetes, HIV, AIDS, and homicide. And that fact just blows my mind out of the water. And now one more fact I'd like to share with you is that approximately one in 10 Hispanics with a mental disorder use mental health services from a general health care provider, while only one in 20 receive such services from a mental health specialist. Also, as you look at the graph, <clears throat> you will notice about 15% of African Americans, 13% Latinos, and 11% of Asian Americans <clears throat> have all felt that if they were a different race or ethnicity, then they would receive better, better mental health care. This is appalling to me. 
because in America, all individuals should feel that they are receiving equal opportunities for health care. Now, here are some factors in mental health treatment. And so factors affecting access to treatment by members of diverse ethnic and racial groups may include lack of insurance, usually underinsurance, mental illness stigma, often greater among minority populations, lack of diversity among mental health care providers, lack of culturally dependent providers, language barriers, and distrust in the healthcare system. So lastly, I would like to say that ethnic minority groups are way too undervalued in America in many different forms. But hopefully we can come united and try to find a way to accommodate every race and ethnicity, especially the minority groups that are struggling with mental illness. I want to share a quote with you. So Lila Watson once said, if you, sorry, if you have come to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. I think that this quote is powerful because it suggests that unless you have experienced mental health illness for yourself, then you cannot truly understand what these individuals go through with their own minds on a daily basis. These are my references, and thank you for allowing me to give you some insights on ethnic minority groups and mental health.